क्यों और
4 theta at meter per second that doesn't mean it has two velocity the truth is it has only one these are two just parts of it make sense right so if there are two stream lines intersecting that would actually mean that here this particle whether it comes from first stream line or second when it comes here it can go in two directions which is wrong understood it cannot have two different velocities either it is going here or there it cannot go in both directions so that's why we have a sentence that stream lines cannot cannot what intersect understood right the second important point which uh, with uh, right keeping in mind this is that the closeness of stream line indicates speed of flow the closeness of stream line indicates speed of flow. what is that compared to situation one over here another over here you see these stream lines are far from each other they are not so close right you understand what i am saying but the same stream lines when they come here in this narrow section the same stream lines when they come here in the narrow section the distance between them decreases so that actually indicates that here the flow is fast here the speed is more i repeat what i have said here the stream lines are close to each other compared to here right that means in this part the speed of flow is more and over here the speed of flow is less in the near fluid slowly moves but in here fast okay why does this happen that i am not explaining right in fact this is subject matter of next part right why this happen is what we are going to study in the next topic after you write down these two points have you done it yes. i'll just give you one minute or so okay you can write draw the diagram okay that will help you understand what i am saying
solve the ledger here. Okay, suppose a1 equal to, uh, for example, 5 centimeters. And this area here, let's say, is a2 equal to 1 centimeter. Right? And assume that this is fairly long. Okay. Right? So, now we are going to say that suppose inside this a fluid is put, a, fl a fluid is filled. Right? So, which kind of? We are going to again take the assumption of incompressible fluid. Again, what's an incompressible fluid? Whose what cannot change. Density cannot change. What that actually means is that you can press it as much as you want, you can apply it as much pressure as you want. Volume does not change, not like gases, right? When you compress, when you apply pressure to gases, gases will compress. That is, they will re uh, decrease the volume. That won't happen here. Ideal. Okay? This is ideal. So let's say there is an incompressible fluid, means volume will remain constant. So now, think about this carefully. Let's say it's filled till here, till here. Okay, a plumber fluid. And suppose here there is a piston and we move this inwards. Let's say in this circle, this is a piston, we move it inwards. By, for example, 2 centimeters. So do you realize that from this 2 cm the fluid will have to go away? Yes. Yes? yes. No. Yes. From the 2 cm the fluid will have to go away. Clear? Why so? Because the piston will come in. So the fluid has to move. Right? So if this will move 2 cm, right? Let's say here is a you know, free piston again. So if this will move 2 cm, the question is, how much will this move towards the right side? Two centimeters. Not. Okay. The reason is, if it's an incompressible fluid, the volume should remain constant. So, listen to this case. If this moves two centimeters forward, the fluid we have to give up this much of volume. But right? how much is this volume? Area 5 cm square, distance 2 cm. How much volume will it have to give up? Volume also get to the 10 cm cube. Who understood that? Okay. Do you remember? Yes. So AL. Again, volume is always cross sectional area into distance or length. Is that clear? So, again, when the piston moves 2 cm, from that much part the fluid will have to move. So, it will lose that much volume. But you know, it's incompressible. Volume will never change. So, R into volume, I have you, into volume and I am the How much volume? Again, how much volume? 10 cm cube. So, to cover 10 cm cube, how much will this have to move? 10 cm. Who understood that? To cover 10 cm cube, this will have to go 10 cm. Why 10 cm? Same reason. Area is 1. Length has to be 10. Clear? So that from here, it will move all the way till let's say here. So basically, do you realize what's happening? The part of fluid that was here will now settle over here in this part. Do you understand what I am saying? Yes. And the volume of this cylinder and the volume of this cylinder here will become okay. That is what is because of incompressible to volume to the So that total volume remains. Understood this? Sure. So if I have understood this, the mathematical form of this is called equation of continuity. Let uh, let's derive. So suppose here we have a piston with area A1 and then here you have oh, yeah, another one with area A2. So A1 and A2. So if this moves the distance X1 and let's say this moves the distance X2. They are not same, correct? X1 and X2 are 
not safe as you all can see so do you agree that yes no volume change over here volume decrease should be equal to volume increase yes right so a1 x1 that's the volume lost and a2 x2 is the volume gain both should be same then the way time then the way again constant got it so a1 x1 is equal to a2 x2 this is one form of equation of continuity you can write it in a few more forms differentiate both sides with respect to time hopefully you remember differentiation yes okay See, differentiation is just like squaring suppose someone says x equal to 2 so you can square both sides you understand what i am saying yes or no yes If you write x equal to two, from that you can always write x square equal to two square. Why so? We square both sides. Just like that, if you write even x equal to x two, then you can always write this. We differentiated both sides. Area of this cube is a constant. Never going to change. A one outside. What remaining inside? After you put a one outside, d x one by d t. X indicates position or how much it has moved. What do you think dx by dt will be? V. V. Velocity. velocity. Clear or not clear? Yes. Right. Dx by dt is velocity. velocity. Right. So here I should write a1 v1. Again, how did we get a1 outside? It's a constant. And then you just have to do differentiation of x1. So differentiation of x1 with respect to time is v1. Similarly on that side. A to B. This is the most used form of equation of continuity. This is right, of course, but this is what we use most of. All right, A over B one is equal to A to B. Fine. Must remember that, and it is true only for which fluids? Incompressible. Incompressible. Right. Okay. Can you learn to anyway? Diagram. Three steps. That's it. Hopefully you do realize why I was saying it's like common sense. Yes. Here to I was and here to was A was one thing. It won't disappear, right? Done. No. Don't forget to write this. This is only true for incompressible fluid. Obviously, 
obviously the streamlines are at more distance here but over here the streamlines come through so it's like a tube here the tube is broad and here the tube is narrow so if i say here is area a1 and here is area a2 then which area is more a1 or a2 a1 yes cross sectional area a1 is greater than here okay use that equation and do you realize based on that i can actually write down that v2 upon v1 is equal to a1 upon a2 yes or no yes okay. now a1 is greater than a2 numerator is bigger than denominator so which velocity will be more which speed will be more v2 or v1 v2 v2 v1 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 